Hey, good Sunday morning and welcome back. This is Dee Dee and this is my channel where I help machinists become millwrights. And uh, I've got uh, the answer to the little hole in the tip of those indicators. And uh, nobody's come up with it yet. And it's an old, old trick from machining years and years ago. And only millwrights remember it, I think. So anyway, I'm, uh, this uh, drill press here, I've got to replace the glide bearings in it that uh, moved ahead. If you look at the machine shop in the Battleship uh, New Jersey video, um, the guy there, shows how easy this thing glides back and forth but those bearings i had to cut them out because they seized the entire head um, up and so this thing doesn't glide nicely it moves but it's running on the lock here and uh, I'll, uh for uh, uh radial drill press heads I'll, I'll show you why it's not going to be so bad real quick and then i'll go inside and show the uh uh answer to the riddle of the uh, hole in the dial indicator dip. <laughs> I hope you're all doing good. It's really quite nice here. It's uh, kind of clouded over a little bit. I've had to pull the cover over here. I had a little bit of rain. Now, this is the lock here. And there's this plate here, and I kind of forget it's there. So if I pull this plate out, you can see how it lips over the square way here. And uh, so if I can, re I'll remove that. And uh, then at the end here, it'll be much easier to uh, get over this dovetail or that angle. You can see it's got an angle here and the flat here. And this uh, piece of steel here is what those ball bearings ride on to make that head glide so nicely just with ease. So with those bearings removed, the head has dropped down onto that lock. So when you move the head now, it's just skating on that lock. It's really some tight tolerances, how this is. So when you get it up on these bearings, probably lifts it up maybe 20 thousandths and uh, then it glides, releases that lock, you know, it just lifts it up. Then when you tighten the lock with the handle on the other side, it's got a heavy cam and it lifts the whole head up and wedges it here. And that's how the heads lock on these. You can see the lip there. See how that is? And it comes to here and uh, that plate you know, if you take that plate off, this head will tilt over. So it, it's tight, but not too tight. And uh, I'm just going to make a decision on how, where, and when I do this. But I've got other work to do on, on, on the drill press. This is not a real pressing thing, you know. So, um, and I'm likely to move to a better location for, you know, these purposes. <laughs> so, I don't know. And, you know, that uh, if you followed me over to uh, the recovery yard, and if you've seen what is there, I can pay Robert to come over here. That is six blocks away and load all this stuff on one of those semi-trucks and uh, pay one of his people to drive it within three states. So moving for me is not very hard. Okay, so let's head on in and solve the mystery of the hole in the tip of ancient indicators. Okay, back in the shop here. Now on this channel, I have never once, not ever, 
asked anyone to subscribe. I've never done that. Oh, push the buttons and like and do the. Well, I don't know. This is a not profitable channel. The uh, I make two dollars per video, and hopefully, eventually, that'll help. Uh, uh, me get a better computer and uh, maybe update this GoPro camera or some sound stuff or something. But anyway, my mission here basically is to uh, help bitter old machinists and plus give uh, new people tips and stuff like that. But to help bitter old machinists that have got behind the keyboard on a computer and just, you know, turned into kind of nasty people. And I want to help them be a happy millwright. <laughs> now, <coughs> excuse me, almost choked up on that. <coughs> oh, but on that subscription thing, don't worry about that. But I've been told if you push the like button, if you see something you like and you push that like button, other people will have a chance to see something that you might think is interesting. Okay. And uh, just in the course of doing things, I think <laughs> you're going to see a lot of little tips because uh, I've worked on a lot of broken things. And that's what I think millwrights do, is fix broken things like that. So you learn to be a machinist, right, any way you can, even if you have to go through that crazy stuff and be on a premise and stuff. Go through all that horrible stuff. Then, you know, think about being a millwright. Okay, so here is part one. <laughs> I'll show it all right now. But one of the things that you can do with the hole in the tip of the indicator, and right here on the fabulous, incredible, beautiful, Monarch 10 double E. Do make us like it. We have a genuine Lufkin surface gauge with a Lufkin indicator hole in the tip. There's a thread through this, see? And you can pull on that thread and watch the bottom. You see that? Here's the indicator part. Let's see if I can get that in there. Hopefully this will be steady. So you can attach this thread to many different things and determine how far you moved it. In places where you can't put that, you can attach this thread and measure things. See that? Wait, but there's more. Okay, over here. At the invincible, incredible, powerful Axelson engine lathe. We have another one. We have one of those miniature bases. Surface gauge. This time with a uh, Starrett Jr. You see here? It has the thread going through the eye. And the thread is going to this shaft in the chuck. Let's see if I can hold this steady. And this time the needle is here. And I will rotate the chuck. Are we observing the needle moving? Let me see if it's in there. Don't want to push the wrong buttons. It's hard to see in this camera. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's there. I see it. Maybe I can move it a little closer. Okay, ready? What did that do? Why, I was able to check the run out from about 10 inches away. 
So like if you're working on a gearbox or something, and you think that there's some play or run out deep, deep down into something. And this is where I first saw this. I saw a Navy machinist millwright working on a reduction gearbox for a turbine. And they have um, the small shafts up on top that take the high speed, then it goes down, 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 down. And the shafts get bigger, bigger, bigger. But they're full of shafts, and uh, he thought something was bent. He took a wire, and he fished a thread through there. Brought it up to the top of the transmission, put the thread through the eye of that indicator, rotated the transmission, and found uh, that he did have run out down in that shaft and had to tear the whole darn thing apart and fix that. Isn't that interesting? I thought she'd get a kick out of that. And I have found that pretty uh, uh, useful in, in, at times. And you don't uh, have to if you, if you uh, I'll throw this in, and I, uh, you don't have to loop it through there either. You can like I did over there, just use a knot to catch it. Then you can put the, the thread around stuff or through stuff and then anchor the other end. So, you know, if you can't loop it, you can uh, direct it. So there it is. It's like magic, isn't it? When you're doing millwright work, you, you take advantage of uh, all these things you can. Okay. I'll be back if I could think of anything else right now, but I thought I'd uh, go ahead and load this video and solve the mystery. You guys have a good day.